All right, guys, today is the last video for this week. Um, so just like the past few days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a problem from the homework from last night. Um, I know we haven't done a ton of proofs together, so um, I did pick the final problem from that trapezoid and kite sheet, and that is what we are going to do. So um, the problem we're looking at is J, K, L, N is a parallelogram. J, K, M, N is an isosceles trapezoid. And we want to prove that K, L, M is an isosceles triangle. So I am going to be doing a proof. So I'm going to write my statements and my reasons. I think the big thing here is just being careful and making sure that we're using exactly what we're given and we're not jumping ahead to anything. So remember, the very first thing that we're going to have, our very first statement, is going to be our givens. So I'm going to write that statement one, J, K, L, N, is a parallelogram. And J, K, M, N, is an isosceles trapezoid. And my reason number one is going to be given. All right, number two, now I wanna look to see what do those givens tell me? So in this, I know I have a parallelogram and I know I have an isosceles trapezoid. So let's take a look at that parallelogram piece first. So in a parallelogram, I know that my opposite sides are parallel. So I'm going to mark that in my image, but I'm also going to state that in my proof. So I know that segment JK is parallel to segment NL and that segment JN is parallel to segment KL. And the reason for both of those, so reason number two is going to be opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Okay. So then I can think about what is, what else do I know? What else is going to help me prove that I have an isosceles triangle in KLM? Well, I also know since I have a parallelogram, my statement three, I know that JN is congruent to KM. So segment JN is congruent to segment, I'm sorry, not KM, KL. And my reason number three is going to be that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So now I know my opposite sides are congruent. So I'm getting close. I know something about triangle um, KLM. I also know step four, since JN, or I'm sorry, JKMN is an isosceles trapezoid, and JK and NM are my bases, I know that JN is going to be congruent to KM. And my reason are going to be that the legs of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So now I know that JN is also congruent to KM. 
Well, now if I look here in step three and in step four, I have J N congruent to two of my sides. I have that J N is congruent to K L and K M. So when I'm looking at those two, K L and K M are two sides to that I to that triangle that I'm trying to prove isosceles. So my step five can be that segment KL is congruent to segment KM by the transitive property. And since now I have two legs of a triangle congruent, that is the definition of an isosceles triangle. So number six, I could say that triangle KLM is an isosceles triangle. And my reason number six is going to be the definition of an isosceles triangle. So there is that proof from your homework. So it is, it's not super long, but it does take quite a bit of thinking and kind of piecing together some of those properties. So today we are going to finish up our notes um, for this unit. So um, what that means is we are going to finish this. Afterwards, you guys are going to take your second formative of the unit. Uh, and then for the first part of next week, we are going to review, 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 do tons more practice, and then um, we will have you guys test next week. Um, don't let that freak you guys out. We definitely, Ms. Stalitz and I will both have tons of time for you guys to ask questions. Um, just like if we were in class, we'll give you guys plenty of practice, all of those things things to make sure that you feel ready um, for that test next week. All right, so the last thing that we have left is to prove that a quadrilateral is a kite. So there are two ways to do this. The first way is just going to be our by our definition. So uh, we must show that two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. So if I draw a kite, and you guys know how beautiful my drawing skills are, so please don't judge me. Uh, so if I draw a kite, I just need to know that two pairs of consecutive angle or consecutive sides. So two pairs when I go around um, one right after the other are congruent. And the other way is if one of the diagonals is a perpendicular bisector of the other. So remember, we just need perpendicular. We need them to be 90 degrees. Bisector, we need um, split in half or two congruent parts. So if I draw this on my kite, I want my two diagonals here and they have to be perpendicular, we have to have that 90 degrees, and then we have to split one of those diagonals in half. Okay, so we are going to prove that ABCD is a kite using the given information. So I know you guys don't have the given information here, so I'm gonna write it in, in my green marker. So I know that AD, is the square root of 61. AE 
is six. B E is five. And E C is 12. And the last thing is that angle A E D is 90 degrees, or we have a perpendicular. Those two diagonals are perpendicular. So, just like a lot of the ones that we've done before, and I'm going to switch to a different color. Um, that way it's a little bit more noticeable what was the given and what wasn't. So we can prove either one of the, the two pieces are true. So we can either go through and prove that two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. So we would have to find side AB, BC, and CD and show that we have at least two pairs of consecutive sides congruent, or we need to show that one of the diagonals is a perpendicular bisector of the other. So what that means is right now, we know that AC and BD are perpendicular. That was part of our given. So we would now need to show that it's a bisector, that we split one of those diagonals in half. And we know just by our givens that it wasn't AC that was split in half because AE is six and EC is 12. So the other way we can prove this is finding what DE is and seeing if that is the same as EB. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find the length of DE. And the way I can do that is I can look at this triangle that's created with A, D, E, and I can see that this is a right triangle with my right angle at E. I have a height of six and a hypotenuse of the square root of 61. And then I have my D, E as that base, and I'm going to just call it so I can use my Pythagorean theorem and say x squared plus 6 squared equals the square root of 61 squared. So then the square root of 61, it, the square root of 61 squared is just 61. 6 squared is 36, and then I have my x squared. Then I could subtract um, 36 from 61, and that will give me 25. I could square root both sides and get that x is equal to 5. So then I know that DE is equal to 5. And so now I do have that, yes, this is a kite. So I could say A, B, C, D is a kite because, um, and I'm going to say A, C is a perpendicular bisector of B, D. So that is all we need to prove that we have a kite. All right, guys, so I will give you the rest of today to work on your formative and to do some practice. Please come visit me, ask questions, um, and I will try to give you guys feedback as soon as I can on those formatives.